I think what concerns me right now is the sledgehammer. That that's concerning. At this time in the morning, <laughs> the song's not helping. <laughs> it's like that slow motion scene, and you're just you know what this song's called. And stuff's just going. It's called Paul Bunyan's Tiny Song. Paul Bunyan's Tiny Song. I don't think there was anything small about Paul Bunyan. That guy was massive, right? No, no, stop. That's there not even funny. No, I've seen you with water. There has get to away. be consequences. <laughs> we'll be right back. Good morning, welcome to Wake Up. <laughs> Can you turn up the opera, please? <laughs> How is that even Paul Bunyan? I don't know, but it's it's Paul Bunyan Day. Welcome to Wake Up, where we wake, wake up. up. I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. we got a great time planned for you today. We've got oh, scripture. We do. We're going to pray over your day, and we've been talking about your message this last weekend. Yeah. on uh, Forgiveness. We're still on Christus, but we're talking about putting forgiveness, because you're trying to put, what, put Christ into your crisis in life. Yeah. And I think one of the big ones that people miss is putting forgiveness in the midst of whatever thing you're going through. Well, it'll change a lot, won't it? Change a lot. Where are we at? What's If you're having we're... like a crisis in your marriage, what happens if you throw forgiveness into it? Oh my gosh. You get two people that throw forgiveness in? It's like a reset. We're like brand new. Wow. And usually it's that unforgiveness that you've been taking to bed. But is it really that simple? Like how am I going to forgive? How are you going to forgive? It's that simple. It really is, right? It is. God never asks you to do something that's impossible. He's only going to ask you to do things that are possible. So if He asks, it means you can do it. And yeah, it does take some work like anything else out there. But man, it's so refreshing when you let go of that junk and that garbage that you've been holding on. Right? And I did this, um, I actually taught up at youth camp on forgiveness. Yeah. And one of the stories that I had, and it happened that morning. I was cleaning off my boat. Right, uh -huh. and so, uh, and I'm not going to name names on who did this. I'm just going to say it was one, it was my four boys, and so no names. But last year when we got done uh, boating, yeah, I said, boys, clean it up, clean out the coolers and everything else, cover the boat. Yeah. So I go to get the boat ready and uncover it, and I'm like, oh, there's my cooler. I've been missing it for eight months. Okay. And I'm like, you never want to find a cooler that's and eight months I, old, by the way. And I open it up. Never open an eight month old cooler. I opened up the gates of hell. Oh God. It was Hades. <laughs> No, in this, and I want you to know what was in there, Jason. You have no idea what this does to me. There though, was ham personally. and cheese sandwiches. Oh, God, stop it. But here's what's better. I Baked never did, in the Arizona I never sun. do tuna fish, but this one day I did oh. tuna fish with tomatoes and lettuce. Now, here's what's funny about it. If when you're, you're eating your breakfast right now, I apologize to you. Here's, you they, they literally just a little bit came up in their throat just now. Here's in their mouth. my question, though. It's been sitting outside in and covered. Why was it in this much liquid still? Uh, Where did the liquid come from? Does it evaporate? Doesn't it evaporate? Melted, Doesn't it evaporate? You would think it evaporated, but you. So I closed it quick, and then now I have to get it off of the boat, right? So I pick it up, <laughs> and I'm and it's no, heavy. No it's slush. so heavy, and I lean over no, the boat without no, thinking, right? No. And then I, I and then I just go, I'll just drop it. So no, don't I, drop it. So I dropped it. <laughs> And when it hit the ground, the lid flew open, <laughs> and all the insides <laughs> the same splashed water. into my face. <laughs> Congratulations, Malaria. you Literally. have Ebola. <laughs> I now have Ebola. <laughs> Malaria actually came into the air and rained down from heaven. It was in my face. That's what unforgiveness is like. You hold that on, and it creates a tuna fish nasty thing that you carry in your day in your life. No, I'm done. We don't even need to go to a scripture because that was... <laughs> so much in that for you, sorry. But, you know, uh, learning how to forgive and, and receiving the gift of forgiveness. You know, the, 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 when we receive God's grace, it empowers you to forgive. Yes. So, so everything that, that you need in your life has already been given to you. So if you're trying to like, well, I'm not sure I can forgive him. Your problem isn't that you don't have any forgiveness. It oh. hasn't, the problem is, is that you haven't really tapped into receiving the forgiveness that God has for you. That's when you, good. Because when you get what God has given you, then it's easy to give it away. And, and so that becomes the kind of the dilemma. And so Jer Jer Jeremiah chapter, because remember, you're a new creation in Christ. Mm -hmm. Like all things are brand new. So it's the old you that's holding on to forgiveness. It's not, it's not the, the new, new you. you. So we just want to reveal more of Christ in you. So this is what we're doing. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 34. 
For I will forgive their iniquity. Mm, now, what's iniquity? It, iniquity is the ongoing, reoccurring sin in your life. It's the boomerang sin. It's the boomerang. It's the one that reared its ugly head again. Uh-huh. For yeah. like the four thousandth time. You threw it. I'm done with you. Oh, I mean, wait. Hey, how are back. you, my friend? Iniquity is, so there's different kinds. There's transgressions, there's sin, and there's iniquity. Iniquity is like, for instance, David with the ladies. He yeah, like the ladies. You know, he had a heart after God. God's grace covered him. He made him king. He made, but with the ladies, he had a lot of, you know. And he passed it down a little bit. Solomon had trouble with the ladies too. Well, sometimes if you give it to your kids, they get it worse than you If you, you don't it. deal with it. Then the next generation has to deal. Some generation is going to have to deal with it. Yeah. Make it this generation. And for us, dealing with it means simply receiving that yes. Christ broke the curse. It's just right. a receiving that Christ has already done away with those kinds of things that get handed down to you. But, it, you know, it's still a, a, an important thing to address is that there are iniquities in people. There are there things are. that it's easy for you to quit. There are things that are hard for people to overcome. Right. And sometimes we look at people and we try to put them in our... Well, why can't they just stop doing that? Yeah, just stop getting... Why is he angry all the time? Why just get over your temper? But then you have maybe gossip. and You gossip all the time. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like or you're all... eating. For me, my eating. I have. That's a tough one for me. You're so skinny. It's my eating. No, no but what I... If you look at what I eat, it's no good. And then you're so skinny. No, I... <laughs> my wife says that I'm a... Uh, I'm a uh, what does she call it? She's, she says I should be like 400 pounds based on 380 easy. <laughs> I, was, I, I vacation with him. I go on a trip with him. And he's all, Ooh, yeah, ice cheesecake, cream ice night, cream and cheese cream, ice cream, and everything. I love my sugar. Right. I, that's why I have to do that 21 day fast twice a year. I do do it you twice do. a year because I have to cleanse me every, every. Anyways, so <laughs> iniquity. iniquity. For I will forgive their iniquity. So uh-huh. God even overlooks the things that are ongoing in your life, the yeah. things that are. Di- he know. Well, he knows. He yeah. created you. He knows the dirt that you live in. And so he says, I'm forgiving I you. Get it. I don't pick and choose that I'm not going well, to forgive that one. Yeah. He's like, I'm forgiving your iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. And you think about like, somebody wrongs you and they keep wronging you in the same way over and over again. Like consider a married couple. Like, you know, you might be uh, like, well, how many times do I have to tell you not to spend all our money at the mall? Are you kidding me? Not seven. Are you kidding but me? seven times. I have to, we have to talk about this. 77. We've been talking about we, we, our yeah. finances for 14 years. I'm done. I'm he done. leaves his stuff all over the house. All the time. He's, it's always his socks on the ground. Yeah. Seriously, does. how many times are you going to leave your seven socks on the ground? Seven times 77. Iniquity. When we learn to realize that God forgives our iniquity, it's easy it for us. It empowers us. It empowers is a good word to go forth and be able to go, hey. Forgive I'm, other people's their iniquity. Wait, he keeps doing the same thing. All right. Yeah. And you got, the, it's a cool story. I know we don't have time today with the, the parable of the guy who got uh, forgiven $10 billion, but then he went out and threw the guy in jail that owed him $10. Yeah. And it's kind of a, an interesting story. Jesus was saying, hey, you know, if you think about how much $10 billion worth of sin God's forgiven you of, it should make it easier to forgive those that even send you for 10 bucks or maybe even $1,000 worth of stuff in this lifetime. And so maybe today's a, a day of, of you focusing on receiving... God's yes. forgiveness of iniquity in your life. God's mm-hmm. forgiveness. And he says, I'm not going to remember your sins no more. I don't even remember them. Don't even know it. And if you receive that, it'll give you the power that you need to be that. Right? God, you remember when I was angry a few minutes ago? He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't remember. No, no, I was mad. Let me remind no. you of my sin. Oh my gosh, God, I, now you're making me mad again. He's like, I don't even remember that. Stop it. God is not counting your sin against you. He's not. And mm-hmm. let's do the same thing as we go forth in our day. You want to pray over the day? Sure. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you empower us in the ability to forgive, that we can draw on how you have forgiven us. We can draw on that gift of forgiveness that you've given us. And then, Lord, we just imitate that. We learn as through that revelation, that germination of that seed in our hearts, that we can be empowered by your power, by your spirit, Christ, to forgive those in our lives that, need, that we need to walk in forgiveness of. I thank you and praise you, Lord, that we just let some things go today, things that we've been holding on to. We just let them go. In the name of Jesus, uh, Father God, that your favor would reign, reign upon our lives and that your hand would be on us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, just, this just came in right now. Uh, we apologize about the weather report we gave yesterday. We said it was hot today. Uh, this just came in. We messed up. Uh, it's very hot. <laughs> so, you know, I know you made some plans and some things. You know, sometimes science isn't exact. Yeah. And, uh, but then tomorrow, it looks like, I know we broke trust. But it does look like tomorrow is, too, going to be, yeah, very hot. Wow. Where else are you going to get the weather report? I don't know where you live, but if you live in Arizona, it's going to be hot. If you don't live here. If you think about visiting. It's hotter here than wherever you are. Right now. 
And uh, make sure you're in church this weekend. If you like today, Bill share house. it. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. 402 today. We're breaking records. We're Deep taking blessed. it up a level.